Hi, I'm Pineapple. Let's review the turbine. This is the Elite 2.0 turbine, a blaster that is attempting to replace the rapid strike, which is a blaster that is very dear to my heart and means a ton of me. Well, it means a lot to me, like a ton in terms of nerfing games. So this thing has quite a blaster to go through in my personal opinion, because I love the rapid strike so much, because the rapid strike is so important to me. So can this thing hold a candle to it in supposedly the worst series you can imagine out of Hasbro? Now, before we start comparing these two, I need to tell you something. This is not a modified rapid strike, it's just painted. So the performance is still gonna be the exact stock performance seen out of the original rapid strike. So with that said, Let's take a look at what makes the turbine good, what makes the rapid strike good, and which one of these things is actually the superior blaster. So first of all, I just need to address something. The turbine is very small. It's a lot smaller than you would expect from first seeing it in videos. It looks like the big blaster of the Elite 2.0 series. It looks like the gun, the big gun of the year. It looks super big, super heavy. It looks like it's gonna be like a pain to hold, but no, it's very tiny, surprisingly. It's not a small blaster, obviously. Like, this is still a primary class blaster. Very similar to the turb- uh, not the turbine, the, the rapid strike. This thing was made to be a primary class blaster. And so, yeah, the turbine being so much smaller, yet still a primary class blaster, is a really big deal because the rapid strike is a big blaster. It's pretty hard to get around corners. It's very thick. It's very blocky. It's a very blocky gun. So trying to just quickly maneuver that around corners is a pain. But with this thing, it really isn't. It's really, really simple. So um, yeah, just to let that out of the way, let's get started with the ergonomics. I love this so much. The ergonomics on the turbine are quite frankly some of the greatest ergonomics I've ever used on any nerf blaster, only rivaled by the Ultra One. I love the way this thing feels in my hands. The main grip is fantastic. It is super comfortable for pretty much any nerfer. It seems like this grip would configure to anyone with any sized hand and would still be comfortable. That's a big deal because most reviewers have different sized hands. Not everyone has the same size of hands. And my hands fit fantastically on this. And I absolutely love the way this feels to hold. It feels really good. That doesn't even talk about the foregrip. The foregrip is arguably even better than the primary grip. For the, for the rapid strike, oh, well, that's an issue that I completely forgot the rapid strike had. Come on, it, it doesn't lock. Come on, there we go. All right, yeah. I like the main foregrip, or not the foregrip, I like the main grip. It seems pretty nice and pretty ergonomic, but there is a big groping issue that I really dislike about the rapid strike. And the turbine fixes that. They both weigh the same, however, the rapid strike's batteries are at the front while the turbine's batteries are in the back. Do you know what that means? That means that while you're using the rapid strike, all the blaster's weight is in front of your hand and being supported by this finger, just your middle finger, as your middle finger is going to be resting on here. So dual wielding this means holding like a full pound of Nerf gun on just your middle finger and kind of on your hand, but mostly on that one finger, because if you let go of that, it's going to tilt down and you need all that support to hold this up. Yeah, I legitimately just dropped my phone trying to, show you, trying to show you this. And yeah, it's very front heavy. It's very hard to hold this up and it's very uncomfortable to try and dual wield this. Dual wielding rapid strikes is possible, but it's a nightmare. I've tried it before with one of my friends rapid strikes and it was not fun. Also, I'm pretty sure the magazine release is just broken. Why, why, won't, it, why won't it catch? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. However, the turbine having the batteries in the back means that all the weight is right above your hand and right above the entire grip, not just your middle finger. So you're gonna be holding that up with all your weight on your hand, not just the weight from your middle finger. So dual wielding this is very possible for anyone. I mean, I have not gotten a chance to dual wield this yet because I don't know anyone else who has a turbine. However, I can say right now that dual wielding this thing would be a cakewalk compared to doing it with the rapid strike. This thing is super comfortable to dual wield and yeah, that plus the improved ergonomics. I mean, it's it's a win-win situation. 
Uh, the only thing that the Rapid Strike does better than the Turbine, and this is a pretty big thing that I really need to address. The magazine release on the Turbine is completely screwed up. It does not, it's not good at all. Allow me to demonstrate. I mean, to be honest, both of my mag releases on these are botched, but with the Rapid Strike, you have the mag release right here. You strike it with your middle finger, it pulls out easily. It has a metal spring that's holding it in place. It's a nice magazine release, super easy. On the turbine, that is not only in front of the main trigger, which means you have to press against it with the back of your knuckle, but it has a plastic spring that is supported just from the top. So doing this is really hard and really, really annoying. Come on, there we go. There we go. Yeah, trying to switch mags on this thing efficiently is next to impossible unless you have two hands. And I don't have two hands because I'm trying to make this review. So I cannot properly show you this. Also, for some reason, the mag does not want to go in. Thank you. And uh, as for the rapid strike, I do think the mag well is pretty good. Um, the other problem that the turbine has is the barrel attachment it is really floppy. I don't know why. The Rapid Strikes barrel attachment is like 10 times better. It's a lot It's a lot more like sophisticated and easy to use. While this thing, it just doesn't really work that well. And I don't really think that it's a good idea trying to put a barrel on this because it's just gonna flop around. Um, but other than that, they've got all the tack rails except one. They uh, This thing only has four rails. This one has five. I'm not sure why they got rid of a rail. They probably could have put another rail right there, um, but they don't. They have one there, one on either side and then one on the bottom in front of the foregrip. Very similar to the Rapid Strike. You have the one on the bottom, two on the sides, and then the third one up here, but then there's an extra one right here. So they got rid of that for some reason on the turbine. I don't know why they did that. Um, but either way, I don't really care. Um, one thing that I should have probably addressed with the Rapid Strike is I like the stock a lot better uh, on the Rapid Strike than the turbine. The stock on the turbine is very, very small and it's uh, pretty hard to shoulder this. But, I mean, with that said, like I said earlier, it's a very small blaster and you can easily maneuver it around corners. So, really, that's not a big deal. I don't mind that at all. Now let's get on to what everybody is waiting for. The performance. So, I am going to shoot these blasters from equal ranges. About 18 to 20 feet away from that door. And everybody probably knows this that's seen my videos. This is the, this is the firing hallway. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to stand with my back pressed against the door and I'm going to fire both of these blasters at arm's length, emptying this magazine. The Rapid Strike using the 12 round magazine that I painted to go along with it and the turbine using the included 18 round magazine because you can't really paint the turbine because it's clipped together. So remember everyone, uh, remember the quote, Elite 2.0 is the worst nerf series. All right, just remember that. Elite 2.0 is the worst nerf series, right? I jammed it. <laughs> As I'm trying to prove a point, the gun jams. All right, but I understand why, and it's kind of, uh, it's an easy fix. Give me a moment. I put the mag in too fast and the dart was sticking out and it wasn't going into the barrel properly. So yeah, that was an easy fix. Let's try that again. Yeah, Elite 2.0 is the worst series, right, everyone? That's really good. And dare I say it, the turb not the turbine, the Rapid Strike has been completely dethroned by this thing in almost every single regard, including the price. I paid $50 for that Rapid Strike. I paid 40 for the turbine. $40 for the turbine, 50 for the Rapid Strike. Let that sink in for a moment. For $10 cheaper than the Rapid Strike, you are sacrificing on a perfected mag release, but you are getting improvements everywhere else. And I literally mean everywhere else with this blaster is better than on, than on the Rapid Strike. So this is my personal opinion, all right? So 
don't take this completely seriously because I'm I'm a Nerf fanboy. But let this sink in, all right? If you see this blaster on the shelf and you are looking for a fully automatic magazine-fed blaster and you want something that is going to be better than your rapid strike, buy it. Just get just get over the fact that this is an Elite 2.0 blaster. Get over the fact that you're not going to be able to disassemble it. Because if you're going to disassemble a blaster, then yes, get the rapid strike. But... Like, even then, I have seen people disassemble this. It's possible to take this thing apart. It is not impossible to disassemble an Elite 2.0 blaster. It's just a pain in the ass. But when you get it apart, do you realize how much potential is in here? This thing may be the best nerf blaster that I have seen in a really long time. And I am saying that in direct conjunction with the Percy's. So... I'm telling you this right now. This is not a bad blaster. This is a very, very good one. And I think that you should pick one of these up if you get the chance any day. All right? My opinion of the Elite 2.0 Phoenix was very positive. But this is just on a completely different level in every single regard. If you get a chance to get a turbine, don't hesitate. Just buy it. Just buy the goddamn gun. You won't regret it. You will not regret your decision to purchase this blaster. If you absolutely have to fix the mag release, I am absolutely positive that there will be a tutorial showing exactly how to take this thing apart with minimal tools. So, let this be something that you remember in your life. Because while, yes, Hasbro has been responsible for some abominations like the Warden or the Deploy, they have also been responsible for things like this, which are just fantastic. I am absolutely blown away by this, and I am determined to get this thing open just so I can give it a paint job. Because the Rapid Strike is no more. While that thing will hold a special place in my heart and I will never get rid of it for any reason, when it comes to performance, I will always choose this over the Rapid Strike. Every single time. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you're new. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what do you think of the turbine. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.